Good afternoon, boys and ghouls. Fix the fright, maniacs, macabre. Today, I have the esteemed pleasure of talking to the beautiful, the talented Alina Madison, who stars in the movie The Pig Killer, alongside of Lou Temple, Jay Busey, and Bai Ling. And I am very excited to be speaking to her because she is an award winning actress and a very esteemed award winning actress who, whose talent is very distinguished amongst the film industry, and the horror community. So, Alina Madison, you were born on September 27th, 1976 in Sioux City, Iowa, and showed a passion for acting at a noticeably early age and knew early on that you were going to be an actor. At the age of 17, you moved to Los Angeles to pursue your career. You graduated the two-year theater training program at the Joanne Barron... I don't know what DW stands for. I hope I... <laughs> He goes by DW. <laughs> okay. The Brown Acting Studio in Santa Monica, California. Um, despite your impressive resume, you made your film debut in the Tom Hanks film, That Thing You Do, in the role of Carlita the Go-Go Dancer. Noted director Zombie King from Nine and a Half Weeks saw you and casted you as one of the leads in the film, Shame, 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 as well as the long-running series, The Red Show Diaries. Now, I could have swore it was like the Red Shoe Diaries for some reason. <laughs> so it's show Diaries. Um, yeah, you next collaborated with the legendary director David Lynch on the Academy Award-nominated film Mulholland Drive, starring Naomi Watts and Justin Theroux. Other notable independent film projects include Small Town Saturday, Night Opposite, Chris Pine, and a Cat Award nominee, John Hawks. So the awards you have won, and this is very impressive, by the way, um, Hollywood Women's Film Festival Best iPhone Short for Laugh with Lillian, Best Web Pilot for also with Laugh with Lillian, Best Micro Comedy Short, and you were nominated for the Comedy Surreal Fantasy for Laugh with Lillian, and a bunch of other ones from 2017 to 2016. Congratulations on your awards and your the ones you won. It's, it's very impressive, and thank you so much for joining me today, ladies and gentlemen. The wonderful. Alina Madison, how are you doing today? I'm doing very well, thank you. So, thank I you for joining me. All that stuff you just said, I have so much going on. <laughs> like I said, you have a very impressive resume, and you're obviously you're very talented for these these directors that pick you up in these films. And we are going to talk today about the movie The Pig Killer, which is not available for public release yet, just showing at festivals. And so perhaps you can enlighten the audience of what the movie is about. Sure. And um, it, it, you can see it publicly if you go to the festival and go to the actual film there. But otherwise, yeah, yeah it's not released yet or anything. But um, so The Pig Killer is about a serial killer in Canada named Willie Picton. Um, he basically would uh, um, have prostitutes or drug addicts over and um, then he would end up murdering them and then feeding them to his pigs. And then to top it off, after he fed them to his pigs, he would make like meats and all this other stuff that he would give as gifts to people. That's disgusting. So, yeah, so it was quite <laughs> gross. There was like, I think somewhere in the number of like 50 women that he killed or at least admitted killing and the pig killer kind of revolves more around a couple of the women that he killed because obviously it'd be hard to fit in you know 50 you know kind of different stories um so yeah it, it, and, it and it was pretty uh raunchy obviously i mean and you know the way chad filmed it it's more, you know, he didn't hold back because the truth of the matter is, you know, in a situation like that, I mean, it, it is really horrible. I mean, it's unbelievably, unimaginably horrible what these women have go through or, you know, there's been, you know, obviously men that get murdered too, but it's just like, it's just unimaginable, like what you must feel or think or be, you know, freaking out about. So... I did see the trailer, by the way. So it's Jay Busey who's playing the serial killer, right? Yeah. 
Okay, and I saw Lou Temple. I'm not sure what his role is in the movie is. I think he's a, a sheriff or a cop or something. No, he plays his brother. Okay. And um, Biling, um, she's one of the victims, I suppose, from the last self in the trailer. She's and one of what... the victims. And then Kate Patel is like the main victim that where, where you get much more of her story. And it's more, um, it shows kind of, you know, she comes from a, middle upper class family and it just and she for some reason you know is attracted to Jake Busey's character and there's just something that pulls her you know she's a drug addict so it shows this back and this huge contrast between you know the serial killer's life and then her life at home with her parents who are pretty messed up too <laughs> by the way there's some definitely interesting characters in the film for sure so are, are you a victim as well in this movie? I am. I'm a prostitute also. Well, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm a prostitute also. And I go to the farm with this other guy. And then Jake Busey's character walks in. And he's he's known for throwing these like crazy parties at his house where there's drugs and there's drinking and there's you know, musicians. And um, so everybody always wants to go to these parties. So when I'm there, I'm literally like, oh, my God, please ask me if I can come to this party. And so, you know, then they like her. Um, telling me to go off and meet him in the trailer, so I do, and then that's when just things go completely, you know, sideways for and, me. And, and Jay Busey is known for playing weird characters, <laughs> just like his dad. It's just so weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I have to say, um, they definitely are have two completely different styles of how they play weird characters. So um I, I'm I'm sure there was there were were a bunch of um I want to say arduous scenes in the movie running fighting and not uh, jerking around or whatever. So is there anything you can tell us that was hard for you to do while performing in this movie? Yeah, I mean it was kind of well there were two things. One, you know these are real people. This really happened to them. They have families, you know, that are still alive and, you know, and no, and nobody is taking away from that at all. Um, I can understand why it would be, you know, hard to watch or take it in the wrong context or something, but it's, it, it's really not meant that way. And, you know, and it, it is a movie based on the, you know, true stories and, you know, so we're trying to be sensitive about that as well. And part of the proceeds do go to um, a, a, a donation group. I forgot the name of it. Um, Kate was telling me about it, but to for situations like this and women in trouble. Um, so what was hard for me is one, you know, I was just trying to be sensitive about thinking about who this person really was, you know, or, or, you know, a bunch of them combined like into one character. Um, so I did try to, keep that in mind and then the other part was more of a technical part where I get a syringe stabbed into my eye and then I get thrown mm. down on a bed face first and I literally had to think about staying in character and having the syringe stay in my eye and keep that part the, the way that it's supposed to look without it falling out. So it was it was just kind of like a bunch of things going on at once that I was, you know, that was like a little more challenging, I should say. So how did you prepare yourself for this role? Did you do a like, um, I can't imagine what it's like to play this kind of role. So is there a way you can describe how you prepare for this role? Well, um, Chad actually sent me a, a documentary about you know the real man himself so that gave me a lot of insight to what it was because I had honestly never heard of him before um but once you know I got like the gist of kind of what it was it really helped when I got to set because it's just like for one where we shot you know, one of my really um traumatic scenes was in a really small trailer and it was very confined like it was a real trailer or you know the camping trailer because usually when you go on a set you know it's cut in half it's open you know you have all these cameras around but this was so kind of claustrophobic that it actually really helped um you know the whole situation because it just seemed so much more real and you know the way that they did the 
the set itself inside the trailer, it just looked so sloppy and disgusting that that helped too, because it was just like gross, you know? I mean, and, and, and not, you know, it was just kind of like just the whole situation was bad, but because of everything around it, it just totally worked. <laughs> If I was acting in a situation like that, I think I'd scrub the hell out of my skin as I get in the shower. <laughs> yeah, I went home and you know, took a nice hot bath. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh my god, I worked in that mess. Ooh. <laughs> so, so were you able to watch yourself in the movie after it was done, or do you not want to do that at all? No, I I, I watched it. I've seen it a couple of times now because I just we actually just got back from another whole the head film festival in San Francisco. Um, and then I did see a screening of it before that. So I knew what I was going in for. And, um, yeah, you know, honestly, at this point, I feel like because I've done so many films, when I watch it, it's almost like I don't even think it's really me, you know, like I, it's more like I'm just watching the whole presentation of everything. Like I'm watching, you know, Jake Busey's character and then I'm watching my character, but I'm not thinking about, oh, that's me doing that. I'm, I just, I keep, I think I just have a, like, I, I've learned to separate it a bit. Yeah. You're not the first one to tell me that. So, <laughs> um, I, I've, I've talked to other actresses who play, um, they're being possessed in the movies, like, like possession movies. And after they watch themselves, they're like, oh my God, that was me. <laughs> So. <laughs> it's true well it's funny you should say that because i just got done wrapping a film called scalper and where i play basically a dead person from the past who's just schizophrenic and you know and two dual personalities and all this other stuff and i haven't seen the the um, footage from it yet but i saw some of the onset photos and literally when i saw this one set of them I, I thought the same thing I was like oh my god that, that is me like I could it doesn't even seem like me it, it, it looks so trippy yeah uh, it's I, I can imagine that but I do have a lot of respect for actors and actresses because I would not be able to do that <laughs> there's no way in hell so <laughs> well you'd be surprised I mean there was a time you know when I was first starting out like I would have never imagined certain characters or sets or you know not being nervous or and I still get nervous honestly I, I do I, I don't know if it's like an adrenaline thing or because I'm always like oh I, you know make sure you know your lines and make sure you know everybody else's lines and so I if there's like that pressure but um but yeah then once you just it's like with a lot of things it's like once you keep doing it more and more it just becomes like natural to you like you know the camera angle or you know not to block somebody or you just start learning those technical things on set. And some things you just can't learn in acting school. You know, it's just like you learn certain techniques in acting school. And I loved the Joe and Bear and W. Brown program I went to. And um, it was absolutely great. But actually being on set teaches you a whole different arena of things that you need to know. Well, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing this movie because it star-studded cast. You're in it. Lou Temple's in it. Byling's in it. J.P. is in it. And is this an independent film or is it something from the mainstream area? It's independent. Okay. Because I, I never would have thought I've seen so many good celebrities, actors in an independent film. So, and Well, Chad's fun to work with, you know, and he he's like – He's a cool guy, and he's a good director, and he, he he knows what he wants, but he still lets you have the freedom to do what you need to do, too, you know? And, and then he just gives a lot of information, and, he, and he, he just makes it really easy to be on set with. So is it easy to work with the other actors as well? I mean, I found it – I mean, I didn't work with Bai Ling. I didn't have any scenes with her. Um, I did, obviously, most of my scenes were with Jake. Um but I saw, you know, there was a lot of the casting crew because, like, Ginger Lynn was in it as well, and she was on set the times I was working. So, I, you know, I got to talk with her with a bit. But no, everybody, honestly, if there was anything going on behind the scenes, I I didn't see it because everybody seemed to me to get along. And I've been on sets where there's been drama and like just stuff, and it kind of just makes it just doesn't make it as pleasant, you know. It's just like. Be professional, leave the drama at home. You know, we don't, we're doing dramatic enough stuff here as it is, you know, on a set. Like, we don't need the personal drama, too. I mean, don't I understand add to it. 
but um, you know, just like I try to just leave all that stuff at home, and I I never get involved in any of that stuff. So no, it was like a really, it was really easy, and same with Scalper. It was um, Chad directed that also. Um, everybody was just nice. Um, go in, get their job done. You know, they don't waste time, so it just makes it it just makes it a pleasant experience. And, and that's one thing I like about um the horror community. Everyone is so laid back and so committed to what they're doing it, it it's 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 a great thing to watch it's, it's a good thing to see because i've met a lot of horror actors at conventions and they're so easy to talk to so uh, i mean um despite two other conventions i've been to like comic book conventions it, it's really hard to talk to people at comic book conventions because their prs are like trying to block them or say hey yo you can't talk to him right now I'm like, really <laughs> it's like that's why you're there <laughs> But at horror conventions, I, I was able to go up to. Uh, I met the first time I met Lou Temple was it was at a horror convention in Kansas City, and I think he was promoting um one of his Rob Zombie movies he was in. So, and I just walked up to him and I started talking. To him. We we talked for fifteen minutes. I mean, it was great. I mean, so yeah, um, I was also able to interview Lou Temple as well for his his movie he played in Feral, and yeah, he's such a fantastic guy. Yeah, he's really, he's super nice. Um, I, I met him a few times on set and yeah, he's super nice too. And, but like I said, I, I didn't really, I didn't come across anybody that wasn't nice, you know? And, and, and the thing too, you know, when I had the special effects, cause Joe Castro did him, I mean, he's so good at the effects and he's so fast. Um, and I worked with him years ago as well, but it's just, he, the, I love how he like, cause he had to do some raunchy effects, you know, getting this eyeball and, and mine was probably the least of, some of what was going on with some of the other effects on the actors but um I love how he just like talks you through it like he tells you exactly what he's doing when he's gonna do it how he's gonna do it how it's gonna feel it is. so there's so you're like okay because it's just like you know like in that instance we're talking about a needle in my eyeball you know so it's like so it's just good you know to have all that open information too and same with me and Jake. Like, we talked through what was going to happen in the scene because it was where I, you know, I get killed. It was quite dramatic. You know, I, I get assaulted. Um, I have this needle in my eye. And then he had to stick it in my eye. So, like, we really, he was really cool and really, like, um, just uh, sensitive about how we were going to do it and to make sure that I was okay with it and that I was comfortable with everything that was going to happen, even, like, when he had a flip me over, you know, really hard and stuff. And he just was really, you know, like, okay, I'm going to do it like this. Are you okay with that? So I, I, I really appreciated that. That is so cool. That's awesome. Yeah. He's, he's on my, he's on my list to interview hopefully one of these days. <laughs> yeah. No, so, he'd be to talk to. so maybe you could reach out to him for me. I don't know. <laughs> I'll All do right. My best. Okay. <laughs> All <laughs> right. So, are there any other upcoming projects or movies that you would like to tell the audience about that they can look forward to seeing? Sure. Um. Thanks for asking. Well, that you mentioned LW. It's hashtag LWL. Laugh with Lillian. It's a web series. It's a total comedy. Um. I wrote it. Um. And I star in it. And we've done two episodes, and both episodes have won awards. Um which has been great. They're literally like five minutes each and we're filming um, two more episodes like, like in January. Um, so we're really excited about that and we'll do the festival round again with that. So that's really cool. And um, I have another film that I actually just won Best Actress in called Dark Diet. It's a short film. It won in Sholo just like two months ago. So that was really nice as well. As soon as I figure out where that's going to be showing and stuff, I'll um, put that out there also. And then I'm working on another film called The Show, and it is about a very famous maestro based on a true story. Um, so yeah, so there's some stuff going on next year that's pretty exciting. And then, um, like I said, Scalper will probably have a quick turnaround because they, they're really good about getting their stuff out there. So I'm excited to see that one as well, especially with my possessed character. That sounds fantastic. So yes, I am gonna see if I can definitely watch the pink killer so I can see people get killed. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, you will definitely get killed. <laughs> and I'm definitely looking forward to watching you in the movie. So um, thank you so much for joining in and doing this movie. I really do appreciate it. You taking the time out. And 
I don't want to hold you up anymore because you have to go pick your daughter up. So, <laughs> I asked Lillian, that's what our show is based on. But yes, Sam, well, thank you so much for having me on. And hopefully, we'll talk soon. And if I can um, get a hold of Jake or see if I can get you to see the pig killer, I will, I'll reach out to you and I'll let you know. Awesome. I would greatly appreciate that. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the beautiful, the talented, the most distinguished actress, Elena Madison, thank you so much for joining me. And I wish you the best in your career. And if you don't win an award for the pig killer, I'm going to blow some phones up and talk to some people because, God damn it, you're gonna, you better get an award for this one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All righty. Um, take care, and I wish you a good evening. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye. From 1978 to 2002, Robert Willie Pickton committed the most heinous crimes Canada has ever seen. Why, Willie? 49 women from Vancouver's east side were raped, murdered, dismembered, and fed to his pig. Busey is Pig Killer. Coming soon.